Let's bring in our headliner now. Lee Cooperman is the chairman and CEO of the Omega Family Office, joins us once again. Lee, welcome back. It is, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, good to speak with you once again. So I, I hope you heard some of our conversation here. Um, heard it all, heard it all, heard it all. Well, you've been voting with your, your wallet, too, um, because it looks to me like you were adding to a bunch of your positions yesterday as well. Are you, does that say you're not that concerned about what happened in the market over well, the last I couple know, of days? I, I, don't think, I don't think we're paying adequate attention to some of the fundamental issues. But, you know, I, I kind of break my outlook down into a cyclical view and a secular view. Cyclically, I agree with all the positive comments made. I mean, the conditions for a bear market just are not present. You know, bear markets don't materialize out of immaculate conception. Bear markets come about, number one, because the economy smells an oncoming recession. We came at a recession ended in April of 2020, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, and we're well into an economic recovery. Uh, second cause of bear markets, accelerating and problematic inflation. I have a different view of inflation than Secretary Powell, but the most important thing you can say about inflation Inflation is a friend of common stocks because the corporations incorporate the inflation in their costs into their selling prices, which lifts the nominal level of revenues and earnings. Inflation becomes a problem when the central bank begins to fight inflation because fighting inflation is tantamount to curbing growth. We have a central bank that wants more inflation, and they're convinced that it's going to moderate. Now, the way I look at it, it's going to moderate, but it's going to moderate to a still very high level, well above 2%. You know, 64% of business costs are labor. For my 50 years in the business world, the only time I've seen wages go down is in a recession. Okay, we don't have a recession. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I think uh, thirdly, uh, I'd say that uh, you know the market has been very self-correcting. You know, the old line I've used for many, many years. I always say, I wish I coined it. I didn't. You know, John Templeton. So John Templeton, bull markets are born of pessimism, growing up, skepticism, and mature and optimism, die in euphoria. Certain sectors of the market have been euphoric. Uh, but I think the overall market is not euphoric. But, I, you know, so I, I think the market outlook is OK. Well, you and, 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 you you were a self-described fully invested bear not yeah. that well, long, I'm very not concerned that long about the ago. Long term. Yeah, I still feel that way. I'm just feeling that I'm having a very good year, you know, uh, having a good day today. I had a terrible day yesterday. I am reasonably I'm not fully invested, but reasonably fully invested, not on margin. Um, but you're still could, you're you're still buying stocks, though. So you can't be that bearish, right? You you told us you you added to your positions in Fiserv, Athene Holding, Bausch Health, Cabot Oil and Gas, Paramount Resources. So that in and of itself is a statement on your belief of where stocks may go. Certainly the ones you like. Uh, but I'm buying. You look. I, I I'm having a good year because I came into the year overweighted in energy, and I think that basically uh, supply demand for energy is still going to be relatively tight. With the exception of the UAE, United Arab Emirates, and uh, Saudis and the Kuwait, uh, there's no not a lot of spare capacity around the world. As the economy grows, supply and demand will tighten up. These energy companies have religion; they see what's going on with ESG. Uh, so I think they're going to be very careful in how they spend. And so, uh, you know, a, a paramount, uh, you know, resources, a Canadian oil and gas symbol POU up in Canada. Uh, the company in another year could be debt free. Uh, selling at uh, less than four times cash flow with, uh, you know, substantial resource base. Same with Tourmaline, which is uh, up in Canada, TOU. So, yeah, I, I find a lot of things to do. Uh, you know, I was a director of one of the greatest corporations in America for 20 years, automatic data processing. The greatness had nothing to do with me being a director. I was lucky to be a director. When, when I was a director, we always looked at uh, uh, first data. It's one of our benchmarks to compare you know, our valuation and our acceptance and our performance. Well, First Data is now an important part of Fiserv, run by Frank Bizignano, who's a terrific CEO. Fiserv, I could purchase for under 20 times earnings. Today, ADP is close to 35 times earnings. PayPal, another comparable, is, I think, 65 times earnings. Inside of Fiserv, there's a square. Square is 160 times earnings, and Fiserv is under 20 times earnings. Yeah, so I find a lot of things I could do, but I have to say the thing that bothers me most is I think we're eating out of seed corn. You know, if, I know you can have Rick Reeder on after me, and Rick's terrific guy on fixed income. I like him a lot. I respect him a lot. I have a little bit of money with him in my foundation. But he's a terrific guy. I don't understand fixed income. You know, uh, and I, I think personally it's the result of a bunch of academicians running monetary policy around the world. You know, historically, historically, okay, the 10-year U.S. government bond is yielded in line with nominal GDP. 
nominal GDP. This year, nominal GDP will be up probably in excess of 10 percent, and the 10-year government is uh, 120, 130. The long-term uh, nominal GDP, probably around 4 percent. So the bond is very mispriced, and that's really pushing everybody on the risk curve. Okay. The second observation I would make, before this last three and a half trillion dollar of package and the three hundred billion, uh, three trillion, three and a half trillion dollar package and the three hundred billion dollar child care credit, we've already injected into the economy a trillion dollars of stimulus and excess of wages lost. And it's very clear what's going on. You know, the uh, central bank and the fiscal authorities are focused exclusively on unemployment. They're not worried about the debt creation. And I worry, I'm 78, maybe I shouldn't worry, I'll be dead before maybe this problem hits. But basically, uh, I, I worry about it. I, I worry about it uh, because debt's growing too rapidly. You know, this nation was founded in 1776. We had no national debt. Three years ago, it got up to $20 trillion. Today, it's maybe $28 trillion, you know, and rising at the rate of $3 trillion a year. It's not sustainable. It has to have a long-term impact.